Welcome to this special screening of Minari. Um, now, the screening is in celebration of Korean American Day, uh, celebrating the arrival of the first Korean immigrants through Hawaii to Hawaii some like 118 years ago. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce and speak to the team behind Minari. Minari. This, uh, we will first start with um, the director writer, Lee Isaac Chung. And we have also with us Steve Yun, who plays Jacob. Yeri Han, who plays the character of Monica. And Yeo Jung Yoon, who plays Harmony. Hi. Such, um, yeah, it's such a thrill to, uh, <laughs> to see all of you at once. And I, it's like, it's, it's fantastic for me because I get to have like a personal conversation with all of you. And I'd like to start by, it's almost hard to not even get emotional about it as, a, as an actor and as a Korean American actor to see a film that is so profoundly um, speaking to me. And it's almost like I don't even want to say why because there's so much uh, uh, profundity in it. Anyway, it, it is a greatly moving piece and I also want to say, um, Isaac, it's I really feel that this film um, it, it will go into the canon of, of American, great American films. It is so profoundly American. Um, I'm going to start with just the questions that I have for you as, as a director. Um, how did you start by create, how did you create a, a safe and kind of um, space for your company of actors. And, and with that, did you have time to rehearse? Mm. Uh, first of all, thanks for that introduction. And uh, I'm just so glad that this film spoke to you. Um, that, that means so much to me. Um, but in, in terms of creating a safe space, um, I, <clears throat> I made sure to bring all the actors to uh, the middle of nowhere and to load them up in a, a little trailer home and turn up the heat and uh, <laughs> create the environment of uh, what it actually was like to grow up in, in that place. Uh, all, all kidding aside, I mean, we, we were um, in Tulsa and we were away from um, the sorts of lives that we're used to uh, or where we're living now. And we, we like to gather at this house um, that uh, my good friend Ina Lee was basically being a host uh, over and she was cooking meals and really creating this space for us and the actors and I we would get together there and just have a very communal experience and that started a week before production uh, we we did a lot of reading of the script and just talking about life talking about our memories talking about our grandparents um, and all through production once production started we we kept on reconvening there because we felt like the script was constantly in process. Um, we, we were always adjusting it. Uh, and uh, it, it, it made it feel more alive somehow that, uh, that this document, we could keep on uh, changing it and, and tuning it according to what we were finding on set. Um, so I really just credit that time together that we had in another house, in another small house uh, at, as our second mobile home, basically, where we were um, able to live out this family experience together. You know, it's it's so nice to hear that, you know, as we are right now trying to still get through COVID, uh, mm. there's there's so much that gets translated just being close together as, as a company. Yeah. And I'm really glad that you were able to have that time. This is clearly a deeply personal film. Um, and I, I know you've spoken about how it kind of started with like memories. Mm -hmm. My question to you is like, can you take us through your process a bit? Like from the moment that you sat down and like what was the first memory to um, examining, I guess the word personal to, to, to now, like going through this press, press it's because it's a, it's a whole other section of, of the work. Mm. Um, and, and, and just kind of how that process has changed for you. Um, 
Yeah, it, it started, I was in the South Pasadena Public Library and I was, uh, I decided to spend an afternoon writing down all the memories that I could from uh, the the age that I was, um, uh, or the age of my daughter. So well, the age that I was then, if that makes sense. Um, so uh, my daughter was like six years old at the time and I decided, okay, I'm gonna remember what it was like to be six years old. Um, and I just started to write down, and I think one of my first memories was maybe uh, the fact that uh, we were afraid a tornado was going to hit our trailer home and we were going to run off uh, and, and we we're trying to figure out where we we're going to go. Um, and then I just recalled that, you know, we moved into that home just a week or two before that tornado hit. And so that led me to that memory. Um, and, and that struck me as an interesting way to start a film, this family showing up at a trailer home in which the mother had no idea that the dad was going to lead her to this place. And that that's from true real life. My dad really did that. And uh, um, so I, I just listed down all these uh, different memories all afternoon. And by the end of it, I felt like there was a lot there that uh, could tell a story, but that it could also hold a lot of the ideas that I was thinking through about life in, in itself as a dad, as a, as a husband, um, all these different things that I was wrestling with, with my career um, and just thinking about America. Um, so I, I just felt like, oh, this is interesting that all of this might be able to come together using memories as a starting point. Mm. Um, and in terms of um, my process for that, this, this sounds a little nerdy, but uh, I started off a science major. So I, I often use my, uh, Microsoft Excel and uh, that's how I that's how I start all my scripts, and I I just have different lines of of fragments in each cell, and then I'm cutting and pasting, and I have different tabs, and uh, somehow after a while I I can organize them into something, um, and uh, that's that's really the way I worked with that, and uh, it took me a few months to write that script. I would say I think it took me about five or six months, and then I went off and did some teaching in Korea. And um, around the time that Plan B came on board, I was in Korea and I was able to meet uh, Sun Sen Yim, uh, Yun Yeo-jung Sun Sen Yim and, and Yeti. And Steven was on board at that point uh, when Plan B had come on. Uh, so um, yeah, from, from that point on, that was early 2019, we raced towards production in the summer of 2019. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then, and then we, we got into Sundance and we premiered it, uh, in, in January. So it, it was really quick once, once all of that came into place. You know, for those, for those who are joining us, who actually might not know filming, that is extremely fast. That is extremely fast. And that yeah. is a lot of pressure to be ready, but, uh, for, for Sundance and what a launch that was, uh, oh, you know, yeah, that I, was I don't incredible. That was, you know, I don't know anything, but <laughs> I don't know anything, but I read and I was, uh, you know, in January, whenever it was, I was so thrilled. I was like, what is this? I don't know. I feel like Steve, I, I texted you. Um, Thank you. So can you, also <laughs> tell, you know, this deeply personal experience now going through sharing it with the world and having to kind of talk about it again and again and again, how has that transformed from a very personal way of like, this is my first memory that is coming to then having to uh, talk about it um, in, in a much more global way. Like, does it still mm. stay, does it still stay yours? Does it still Oh, stay I, see, I see what you're asking, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, because also, you know, this film means so much to us. You know what I mean? That it's, 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 I'm sure in some ways it has to have transformed. And I just wonder how that has felt for you, for you and how it might have transformed to something that is deeply personal. You're writing it alone to then. Right. Yeah. That, that process, I, I tried very hard from the beginning of writing that uh, I, I wanted to distance myself from the actual reality of, of what had happened to the story of the film itself uh, so that the film itself would become a film and it would move away from just being a memoir. Um, so 
like one of the very first things I did as I was writing was that I decided I'm going to name this family and name it the Yi family and, uh, and make sure everybody has a name and it's not the name of names of my family members. And uh, I, I wanted it to continue and continue going down that path. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot that was changed from my memories to what's on the page. Um, and then also when we, when we made the film together, I, I made sure that uh, the actors knew that I wasn't looking for them to imitate my family, that I wanted them to treat this as a new creation. Uh, you know, the, the act of making a film, you're, you're creating something completely new. So we're not trying to capture something, but we're trying to create something is, is the way that I felt about it. Um, and full circle, when we came around to the end of the cut, I felt like it still retained so much of the spirit of what I remember from growing up. Um, and I, when my parents, when my family saw it, they, they said that they couldn't stop, they couldn't sleep at night. They, they said that all night they just kept dreaming about Arkansas and, and being in that trailer home. And um, my mom had a dream that she saw my grandmother and my grandmother was Yun Ya Jung. You know, it, so <laughs> there's this interesting thing that happened in which the film kind of infiltrated our memories a bit. Uh, and then now to push it out into the world and to share it with people, I've just been astounded that other people are going along for the ride. And, and that's spoken to me a lot about maybe the shared humanity that we have uh, that, I, that I hoped for as, as I was writing this, that I hoped I would be speaking to. Um, to see that play out and to see that we share a lot of the same experiences. Even people who aren't Korean, uh, who tell me about their grandmothers after this, uh, after they've seen this film. Um, that's, that's just been so crazy and, and so wonderful and beautiful for me. Oh, it's so, so de deeply so, you know, it's, I know, uh, I, as, I, as I said, that it's a deeply American film, because it is. And it deeply, uh, it's, it's, it, it speaks to the immigrant experience in a way that I've never ex seen before. And I also want to add, you know, American dream aside, these are about people who just want to live well. You know, that is, mm. that is un universal. You can see in, in, in kind of in a more mythic kind of way, family, what it is, earth, what it is, what it is to get your, and oh, I was about to say something that happens at the end. No, but, but, but what togetherness is and what struggle is. Mm -hmm. I'm now going to shift to a couple of questions to Mrs. Yun and Yeti. I, can, I just can't, I kind of can't call you by your first name. Um, it, it's kind of like a general question, but I've been so excited to see, you know, there's more <laughs> between Korean Americans and Korean Koreans and crossing over with films. And it's so great so that a, a Korean American or American audience can are now exposed to your work. I guess my question to the both of you in portraying uh, a Korean, you know, actually I'll, I'll back it up by, by telling a little bit of a story that I actually spoke with Sharon about. I noticed that when I was following um, director uh, Bong's uh, whole journey through the Oscar season with Parasite, he, we were seeing him and Korean faces in a very familiar kind of American setting, which is kind of like a, an award setting, press setting. And the thing that I started noticing about him that is that he didn't have a kind of... Uh, heaviness or or if I can say a type of Korean American Han that I just felt like he was uh he as a Korean man he just didn't he was not holding what I feel like myself as a Korean American and I and I, I mean I don't even mean to speak for all Korean Americans but hold in a way of not having been seen you know, the both of you having had successful careers in Korea and li living in Korea have always been seen, you know, but we kind of psychologically as Korean Americans don't have that same setting. So my question is, is that having it portraying a Korean American immigrant experience, not so much in an actor way, what, do you, what have you observed about our 
Korean American experience? Let me answer the first, I'll make it short. So I will do it first. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think um, uh, when we, I'm very old lady, about you, your mother's age. So me as a, being an actress with my age, which, and I'm always trying to be simple, not thinking like you guys as very, very thoughtful and philosophical, but not me. I'm very <laughs> simple and realistic person. So well, when I get this project through Ina, and so, okay, I read the script and then the script was very real to me, very real. So middle of the script, uh, I reading, middle of the reading, am I saying wrong? If I saying English terribly, then correct me, Sandra. And then I called Ina back, is it real story? And he, she said, yes. So I said, okay, I'll do it. Man, at the, see my age, at the time, I happened to have a time not having some, because I was resting for the, all the Korean program. So, okay, I'll do it. And so that's what happened. Then we didn't, I didn't expect to be this much attention, you know, to me, it was just doing my job. And then luckily, the Stephen and Yeri and Isaac, all of them were so nice people. And then Ina was actually not the host, she was the maid actually for us. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all say nicely. I'm not saying nicely. She was made. So <laughs> we got together and I don't know deep in my heart, I don't know, but I have some kind of experience living in the state. So I you know, saw the many people struggling, but we are all struggling. But when you, you are struggling with something, we, I don't feel I'm struggling. So that's the part of the life, I think, uh, struggling is. If struggling is over, then I'll be dead now, I think. I'm still mm -hmm. struggling. Now I'm struggling with English now because of <laughs> this, this interview thing. <laughs> so luckily, we really had a good time, the, not in the set. The set circumstance was very hot and very small trailer. But if we get back to Airbnb, Ina was cooking nicely. So that would that comfort us. That meal is very important. So then next day we went out and work with the Yeri and Stephen and every and Stephen needs some help of that Korean. So I was so proud of myself speaking Korean good. I'm very good, fluent Korean speaker. So <laughs> I, I correct him. That was <laughs> that was my pleasure to enjoy it. <laughs> so then we had a good time, but then later on, we found it out that we had a very big applause from the Sundance. I was really shocked. Me, myself, watching me on the big screen, I don't enjoy it because I tried to, oh, why would I do that scene like that? And that's the, the, always my not enjoy of that watching me on the film. Mm. That's, you know, the, I'm, I'm sure the Stephen and you also do, do, do the same thing. Are you enjoying mm. yourself on the film? Yeah. I hate it, I hate it. You know? I hate it. So then everybody said, some people say, they say they cried. So I told Ina, I talked to Ina, where they cried? <laughs> why, why they cried? And then, <laughs> then later on, all the audience <laughs> applaud to Isaac. Then I cried. I'm a very realistic person. <laughs> you know, I, I think there's another way I can maybe form this question to Ms. Dian and Yeti is that, do you understand why we are crying as Korean Americans seeing this film? Do you understand? Like, is it very different for you? Because I, I defy any, I defy any Korean American. Or any I'm, I'm trying to now gathering why they cried because because with the, through the interview you know like you know like moderator the, the interview they say they watch that film and then they have some comments so I'm now gathering I think 
people, it's, it's a universal, I think. They all, all, not even, you don't go to immigrant, but you still have some strange place. You go there and then you get the same feeling like immigrant people. And you have to, but you still have some strange place. You go there and then you get the same feeling like immigrant people. And you have to struggle with that that circumstance that's we have same feeling and um, it's warmth of that movie it's very warming i think it's different than the dramatic and some kind of what, what do you call that you know help me <laughs> so so that's why people try people understand that um, have moving and touching through our movie I'm done this much. I talk too much. Yeri, ah, 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 사람이 사는 게다 닮아서 그런 거 아닐까라는 생각이 들어요. So I've never lived in the US and Tulsa was actually my first time visiting uh, the States. So everything uh, was such a new experience for me. Um, but the way I think, I think the reaction comes from the fact that, um, you know, people's lives resemble one another. We all go through the same things. 사실 모니카도 뭔가를 알고선 음, 미국 땅에 간 것도 아니고 사실 제이콥이라는 한 사람만 믿고 그런 음, 정말 아무것도 모르고 간 거죠. 근데, 어, 나의 엄마, 아빠 또한, 어, 굉장히 그냥 잘 모르는 어떤 모험을 한 거예요. 알지 못하는. 그러면서 너무 많은 시행착오를 겪게 되는 거죠. So uh, similarly, you know, Monica knew nothing about the States when she moved um, there. She really just had faith in Jacob and followed him to the States to a place where she knows nothing about. And I thought about how these two people, these parents, are going on an adventure completely blind. Um, and, you know, through that, they go through so many trial and error. 네, 제가 이민자들의 삶에 대해서 잘 모르지만 어, 뭔가 우리 엄마 아빠의 삶과 다르지 않다면 다른 누군가의 엄마 아빠의 삶과도 다르지 않을 거라고 생각이 들었어요. 그래서 아 이게 꼭 어, 이민자뿐만이 아니라 모든 사람들 모든 세대에 많은 공감을 받을 것 같았고 내가 전혀 알지 못하지만 나도 눈물을 흘리고 있으면 누군가도 그런 나와 비슷한 감정을 갖을 것 같았어요. So although I don't know much about the immigrant experience, my parents went through that kind of blind adventure as well. And so I thought if my parents went through it, then probably most uh, parents go through the same thing. Um, and that's why I think this film resonated with everyone, uh, not just immigrants, but through all generations. If I'm crying at this movie, then someone else is probably crying as well. You know, the 가장 뭔가 그런 고통스러운 부분들조차 음, 또 극복을 해내는 이 사람들의 사랑과 힘 때문에 더 많은 미국인들이 어, 사랑해 주는 거 아닐까 이 영화를 그렇게 생각이 들어요. And you know, even in the most painful moments in this film, you see this family overcome the struggles with so much love and strength. And I think perhaps that's why this film resonated with the U.S. audience so much. Yeah. Thank you both so much. I, I just want to add one thing. Oh, I want to add so many things, but I want to add one thing is just in the physicality, everyone's physicality. This is something that actually I know you know, a big part of this film is its universalness, but just today, I'm gonna to talk about how it's so specifically Korean American. It's like, I could, it's like the feeling of all of your skin. It was like, I feel emotion. It's like the, I imagine my parents in their, 
in their 30s. And I imagine like, oh, your skin is like my mother's skin. And Jacob's effort or Jacob's um, Jacob's effort to uh, find a place. It, it, it was so in everyone's bodies. And, and um, Mrs. Yoon, you are close to my mother's age now. You know, in, in, in Halmani's body is, is my mother. So I guess one thing that I can say is just the thing that it is being Korean American, seeing this film, is you just didn't realize that you were sitting on so much grief. And watching the film um, lets it go a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think for us, it's, uh, it's, it's something really great to celebrate. So thank you. I'm gonna move to Stiba. Stiba. Um, you know, it, you know, what is going to be like in eventually your canon, <laughs> you know, you know, your body of work, Jacob, what was the thing, you know, what was the thing about Jacob that scared you that you as an actor was like, Oh, I don't know how I'm going to, what that is exactly. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. Uh, I think, on like a surface tangible level, it was, it was proficiency. It was, you know, getting the language specifically correct. Um, and I was going down that route, but then um, one kind of large hurdle that I crossed helped me to let go of approaching it in that way, of just really um, approaching it from a style place and rather from kind of like a heart place. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was to kind of sort kind of overcome the gaze of, of my own internalized understanding of my parents and um, to kind of overcome the romanticization or the lionization or even in even the infantilization of them. I think, you know, oftentimes we're often um, told by or at least you know, the way that we talk about our parents because we're in some ways severed from them through communication and through cultural boundaries, where um, we remember them either through their suffering or in the ways that we miscommunicate love to each other. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had to overcome that archetypical idea of who our parents are. And I warred with that quite a bit because I was like, should an Ajashi stand like this? Should he spit like this? Should he push buttons like this? And like, while those things are true, you know, I, I remember there's this car scene that we cut where I pushed all the things with my middle finger because I was like, that's my dad. He pushes stuff with his middle finger. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and um, you know, I would, I would bring those tiny little things in. But when I started to realize that I am my father, when I started to realize that um, sorry. No, we're right here. I'm totally right here, man. Like, what is that feeling um, of us watching this? Yeah. Of us uh, making this? Um, yeah. I think it's a reconnection. I am just so profoundly grateful for this film. You know, in, in our journey as Korean Americans, you know, as we, I mean, like I, I do this too, this is my job too, to just try and, and tell our stories or just be visible because, uh, because we need to hold our own existence. I um, am just, <clears throat> again, could go on and on about this specificity in the way that I think this film is specifically talking to me and again on this day I feel like I can talk about it you know I can talk about you know when Monica eats the uh, gochugaru and then uh, when she eats the gochugaru I, I burst into tears I burst into tears because it's something that is so specific and and it's almost like oh I never knew 
that I needed that gift. And you just open it. And also, Yeti, when Monica walks into the walks into the mobile home for the first time, she's silent. And and I just I I'm just just the, the amount that you are translating in that is mm -hmm. is also is like a yeah. sound. The entire film was a self. Also, absolutely, we're not just right now in this moment talking about how significant and important this is in the canon of filmmaking, right? I'm talking really kind of specifically and kind of emotionally based for today for us. Um, but it, it, it is all your performances are a self. And, you know, Stephen, going back to, you know, honestly, your sharing of the mystery of the moment, I'm really grateful to as well, because we're not, we don't have it all figured out. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. But I don't know whether I can move it to this question for you. Uh, sorry about, yeah. So, I mean. No, please don't. Do not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apologize. I'm not going to let you do that. Sure. Thanks. Um, um, just, you know, I mean, just, I, I would love to f finish that thought. I just, I was just so overcome with emotion, not because this is the first time I've touched this idea or um, I think it speaks to from my perspective, um, a deep isolation. Mm. Um, I think a Korean American existence and perhaps an immigrant existence, um, especially when you are second generation, holds within it a deep isolation. And to reconnect in this way by, um, you know, for me, a very immersive experience of like a tangible uh, 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 experience where I get to connect to my father in that way um, is deeply is deeply moving. And then to then see that feeling kind of cascade from um, looking at ourselves as human, um, but then even further, just to bridge that divide again you know the, the pain of making this film was not just the difficulty of the circumstances I mean for for American independent filmmaking like sitting in a hot trailer is like par for the course that's that's every movie I've made since I left Walking Dead actually that was Walking Dead that was every day of Walking Dead was that's how hard it was and so that's not to me uh the the most difficult part the most difficult part was being caught in the middle, balancing the Korean way of doing things and then the American way of doing things. And then this one specific sliver of this story that we're telling and trying to maintain its own truth. And then having voices from both sides misunderstanding each other, um, maybe communicating how they see each other in different ways that don't connect as easily. But certain individuals like Isaac, um, maybe myself, Christina O, oh, one of our producers, Doug, kind of just sitting in this gap space, trying to work as a conduit so that both sides may be able to access this very human tale was painful. <laughs> you know, it's painful because you're, you are servicing something larger than you and also understanding how to let go of your own will and desire to be deeply seen so that you can let this thing kind of come through you. And, um, but the beauty of doing that and in, in, in submitting to that has been for me a deep reconnection to my childhood and a recontextualization of understanding that when I was four, and I was brought over here and had kind of my world turned upside down. Um, that's traumatic, <laughs> you know? And then, and then further be, uh, after that, having a slow severing of your connection to your own parents, mm -hmm. that's hard. But then to see each other again, um, in the human spaces is magical. To see mm. each other again as fathers, to see each other again as mothers, to see each other again as husbands and wives is, is um, this, <laughs> you mm. 
you know, is this. And so, yeah, I mean, I think the only way we got to this feeling was by allowing access for everybody on the universal basic truth of humanity. Because if we didn't humanize ourselves in the ex this experience and in this story by not, ex not over explaining, by not making it for us, by us, by not, you know, keeping a gate around it, but rather just opening it up to everybody, it actually allowed um, us to see ourselves a little clearer. And that feeling, I think, is the thing that just keeps like living right here for me. Huh. And, and, you know, you were saying like, what's the course of this press tour been? And it's been like <laughs> this the whole time. Yeah. When we were making it, it was magical because we were there as a family, but bringing it out into the world, um, you know, you have yeah. to, <clears throat> you have to duke it out a little bit mm. for people to like, properly see you and so um yeah it's been this and uh yeah well, not I, to apologize but yeah, yeah. i don't mean to get so emotional about it. it but i've been able to keep it chill for the other ones but this one i lost the american day on a q a we were in <laughs> together so yeah, this one was way worse <laughs> sorry <laughs> do with us you know um, and again you know I think that we'll probably close it up here um, just one last thing Steve it's like uh, thank you again for bravely sharing even now as I yeah. see you integrating it do you know what I mean this the to actually uh, uh, inhabit and embody the the previous generation so for us to actually be able to hold it in a much more clear and in our own way, and and then again, seeing how you have clearly been processing through it, it, it as people have had to, as you've had to ask, answer all these questions, mm -hmm. and that continues being painful. And um, it, it gives all of us um, great gifts. So I want to thank you, Steve, Yeti, Yajung, I want to thank Isaac so much for this film. Um, and thank you so much for your time and uh, just your openness and your, you know, just being seen like that. I really appreciate it. All the best to you guys as you continue on. Thank you so, thank much. You so much, Sandra. This was so great. <laughs> so, thanks, Joe. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.